this day. Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? This day. Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's day. good? Red Panda Anthem. <laughs> Uh, but let's do this. Let's get some questions if we can. Oh, yeah. Before, Chance got a plan. We got to do a super episode. Yes. Janet. Hey Jan, what's going on? I'm good. How are you? What's going on? Well, how, are you? how are you? Ian. Of course, Janet. Nice to see everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that. What did he say? I said, this is my first Janet experience. This is my favorite part of the show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I actually have a question for you. So I'm going to start off question and answer, if you don't mind. I know you mentioned that you created an NFT from, uh, you know, earlier in the conversation out of a ticket to a basketball game. Mm-hmm. Um, but it sounds like you turned that around really quickly. Can you explain how you did that so fast and like what app you used? Or So the process is simply easy. And that's a great question. It's a very simple, easy process. You understand me? It's almost like meditating. All I did, I pulled out my phone. There was a mm-hmm. picture of... Uh, NFT I already had in my phone and I could have used anything as the product picture. Right. And I went on Rarible because I already have an account with them. So first what I did is I connected my MetaMask wallet, started me a seed phrase. You understand me? Um, put money into that wallet. And therefore I had an account because you're going to need money in that wallet. So when gas fees pop up, whether it's 50, 60, or hundred dollars, you can pay for it. Right now they have. And also here's an important key. On Rarible, if you use a contract, then they own your intellectual property, right? So mm-hmm. there's an option where you can create contract, right? Shout out to my bro, uh, Crypto. Damn, what's his name? I'm going to get it. El Crypto. You understand me? He was the first person to give me these jewels. Um, you got to create your own contract. Right. So once you go and create a contract on there, now you can upload your collection under your smart contract. So instead, when it's on Rarible, and you see how much Rarible made today, if you go on their platform, that's because everybody's connected their NFTs to them. But it also means that you don't have to pay for creating a contract because it can often cost like a thousand to twelve hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. Right. So, you know, a low cost model is just building it on their collection. Right. But an ownership model is creating your own contract. So um, long story short, I already had one set up. So I decided to uh, create a single NFT put it under my contract. I uploaded the picture. It went through the transaction of minting process, meaning that it created, it went through that mathematical algorithm, created the NFT. Now I have this digital item up there, right? Um, once it's up there and it's freshly minted, you understand me? The next stage was for me to, of course, post this on social media. You understand me? Now I took the link because they once you post it, they give you a link to where you can share it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, so I took that link, I shared it on Twitter. Boom. We're selling this NFT. It gives you access to come courtside with me, right? Um, and then I took that same link and I dropped it in my Telegram group, right? So the Telegram group people, they, they being nosy, trying to see what he just dropped. Oh, snap, I can go courtside. Yeah. Then, you understand me? I hit up Rashad. I said, boom, can't make it to the game. We already know what we talked about. So let's go ahead and plug the play. So we plugged the play in on Instagram. Bombowski, the people seen it. Next thing you know, somebody bought it. I got the notification on my Proton mail because you want to get a Proton mail. That's another key. Type that in P R O T O N mail. Yeah, I'm talking about you need these decent. Tell them the benefit of having Proton mail versus doing Gmail or Yahoo really quick. Um, These basically, this, you own the data. You understand me? These are decentralized services where people ain't jumping into your mailbox and sending you all that extra stuff. And not only that, you can have your your data hidden. You understand me? Where people not tracking you and things of that nature. So you want to really get the premium, not the freemium model. You get that premium model that you can connect your domains and things of that nature to where people ain't tracking you and all your business. Right. And that's really, really important, especially security is probably the most dangerous thing that we got to deal with mm-hmm, in today's mm-hmm. age. There's no more 10 word passwords. You understand me? You need two authentication factors and everything else going on in your life. So anyway, we post it up. Somebody bought it. I get the notification in my mail. Next thing you know, I get a big cheese and smile on my face. You understand me? Because that's <laughs> success. But I realized that. So it gives you the option to upload um, the actual NFT or you can upload a cover of the NFT. So all I did, so the benefit of that is if I upload a cover of the NFT, then it unlocks the real NFT. So if I would have did it like that, then he would have seen the uh, uh, 19 keys picture that I used as the NFT. And then when he bought it, it would have automatically unlocked the picture of the barcode that is the ticket and told him what the section was. But I'm moving so fast, I didn't do that. So when he bought it, he just had the picture. 
Now I'm put on there. I'm like, yo, I hope this person DM me before the game start. Cause I don't want to be left holding the back. So um, long story short, I never got the DM. So I'm like, Oh snap. I'm panicking at this point. So therefore I decided to go ahead, find his address that was connected. Cause everything is transparent on the blockchain. You can see what a person bought, but that don't mean you see who they are unless they put it up there. You understand me? So I decided to mint a second NFT that was actually the ticket and then send that to his wallet. His friend seen that it came into his wallet because he must have told his friend he just bought the NFT and he was like, yo, the ticket is in your wallet. So next thing you know, as I'm sitting there courtside, you understand me, enjoying myself, he pop up arguing with the security like I'm supposed to be sitting here. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know this brother. Go get the brother out of here. What's going on? Now he's like, no, I'm web surfing. I'm like, oh, what's up? So he sit down and that's the beautiful story. Happy a non-fungible ending. moment. Non-fungible, a non-fungible moment. A non-fungible yeah. moment. That was definitely a non-fungible moment. And you you executed, you had extreme poise. Um, Because like I said, I was trying to get the ticket off just as soon as possible. <laughs> um, I was just trying to just put it on, you know, Stub, stub, up, stub up, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah, um, but think about but, the commission. You know, they they but took sometimes from we forget the resources that we got. Yeah. No, but you showed you showed extreme poise. I, I was extremely impressed by your poise because it was like four thirty, and you said, "All right, let's make an NFT." I'm like, "We got enough time." He's like, "We're gonna make an NFT." Then you didn't even make a post. I didn't get the post until like five thirty. And the game was at seven thirty. Shout like, out to the pressure. Pressure. It was a professional video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so that you made you, you made the video. I put it up. And then a half an hour later, he was like, "It's so I'm like that fast." I'm like impressed. Game I was impressed. Changer. I was impressed. Changer. I was brother impressed. Jeffrey. Very, very impressive. Beautiful story. So shout out to the brother. Very impressive. Um. Okay. Can we get two questions? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, Thanks, you, so please. That was one. Not- <laughs> I mean, you gotta do a part two. Uh-oh, Absolutely. No Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. How are you? Sorry, yeah. I just, I just got a new mic, so I'm just making sure that it's all straight. My bad. Okay. <laughs> Sound good. Sound good. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, appreciate the conversation for sure. You know, I'm always, I'm always hyped for these high level conversations. <laughs> Um, but all right, my question is more so related to 401ks. Um, so I'm 29 right now and I've been contributing to my 401k since I started working. Um, like after I graduated since I was about like 22, um, I have my 401k set up through my job and I have about like 160 K in there now, but I'd like to take more ownership over like the actual, (laughs) I appreciate that. I'd like to take more ownership over like the actual, um, like stocks that I'm invested in, right? Because, you know, you only get like certain selections that you can choose from. Um, I, I prefer to kind of implement more of the whole like two tech, two tech, I mean, two tech, two index strategy that you always talk about, Ian, right? Um, so I was leaning towards opening up like a Roth IRA for that. But like, how would I go about moving the funds from that account to my own account? And then what are your thoughts on that overall approach as well? Yeah, back to the basics. Um, appreciate the question. So, you, you're still working at the job? Yeah, yeah, I'm still there. So you can't really move your 401k while you're working. You can mm-hmm. under some circumstances. Um, some jobs allow what's called the in-service withdrawal. That's a very, that's a very little known uh, fact that some jobs allow you to take up to seven. I've seen up to 80% of your money. And what an in-service withdrawal does is it allows you to actually take money out of the 401k while you're still working and roll it over into an IRA. Um, so you don't pay any penalties on it. But if the 401k does not allow self-directed um, investments where you can actually invest the money yourself, which most 401ks don't, it's just a menu. Like they give you like 10, 15 different options to, to pick and choose from. Um, you don't really have the option of actually rolling over the 401k into an IRA until you actually leave the job. So that's the short answer. Most of the time, you're not going to be able to roll it over into an IRA until you leave your job. But in some circumstances, you can roll it over into an IRA um, via in-service withdrawal. That's, that's good information too, actually. Cool, yeah, because I'm always open to new opportunities too, so I keep that in mind if I ever bounce from this this gate to the next. So I appreciate that for sure. No, no it's, I, it, it's one of these things, one, one minute, it's one of these right. things that, you know, it was so crazy. When I found that out, when I was working as a financial advisor and I was, I found that out, I didn't, I never knew anything about that. And I was telling everybody I, I spoke to in corporate America, they never knew anything about that. They never heard of in-service withdrawal at all. It's amazing that something like that even exists. And 
I would say 90% of people have never even heard of that. They don't even know. 99 it's an probably, to be real. Yeah. So I'm going to give you credit. 99% of people don't know. Everyone, please write that down if you're working. Please do. Jonathan, I have a question for you. Um, you're 29 years old. For those that, let's say, are between 24 and 34, they are afraid to invest. You've accumulated a good amount of money. Uh, what two tips would you give them about investing, even if they're afraid to do so? Uh, I mean, for me, I mean, like I said, a lot of that was just accumulated through the job, right? So just paying attention to what's available to you through your job, making sure that you know what benefits are available to you. So like I do the whole thing, like the most that they'll provide me for the employee stock purchase plan, I contribute the max. When it comes to the 401k, whatever they're going to match me, I contribute the max. Like never leave free money on the table, I guess would be the, the biggest advice. So you, so I mean, that's, that's pretty interesting because a lot of people don't contribute the max. So you were able to, you knew to contribute the max, but you also had to budget your lifestyle. So well, how was that balance? I'm just asking this question because a bunch of people, like I worked in education and like it was very rare that anyone went to the max. So how are you able to do both and budget your life style, really? Yes, for me, it's like, like, I have kids and stuff now, but obviously when I first started, maybe not obviously, but when I first started, I didn't have any kids, right? So I was just, you know, staying in an apartment. And one of the first lessons that still sticks with me now that my mom taught me when I was graduating was pay yourself first. Mm. So that's from the jump. So whatever money I have coming in, X, Y, and Z is where it's got to go. I got to go to these different places, make sure that's taken care of. After that, whatever's left over is what you have to do, whatever you're going to do with. So that's just kind of my mentality. So the money that's going towards 401k, all those kind of things, like that's not my money for right now. That's I'm paying myself in advance and anything else after that is what I'm moving forward with. So I love it. Very, very, very smart, man. Appreciate you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good question. Good question. Yeah, man. Mike sound crispy too, man. Shout out to you.